let's understand the distinction between packaged software and custom built software in the early days of software development so when we say early days we are really talking about late 50s early 60s all the way up to you could even say the mid 70s for that time period most of the software was actually custom built software that is an organization had a requirement for doing something let us say they wanted to do financial accounting or they wanted to build an inventory management system that keeps track of their materials or they wanted to build an order processing system a sales order processing system whatever it is all of the software was custom built and companies either had their own staff to build these systems or they used the services of consulting companies to build these systems now of course these were early days in the history of computing now after all uh, if you think about it computers started being used for business only in the late 50s and early 60s so we are still uh, roughly just about 50 years into the whole process and in the meantime of course computer technology has changed uh, by leaps and bounds so in some sense the field is still learning what's going on so in those early days people did not really understand too much about all of these systems and they learned by doing of course as they did these things for some time they realized that well you know what financial accounting is financial accounting no matter which organization does it there are going to be lots of commonalities especially financial accounting because it's also controlled by law in terms of you know what you can do what you cannot do what are the standards all of these things and therefore they started saying you know what we don't have to really build this custom build this for every organization because there's a lot of commonality we can just build it once and all organizations can really use them okay so you started seeing the development or the emergence of package software software that is packaged and can be used by many organizations well it's possible that there are some areas for example uh, payroll accounting there may be a lot of commonalities between various organizations and yet there could be some small differences as well so in those cases what you would do is you would buy the package software and then you would customize it that is make the small little changes that you need so that it works properly for your organization okay so that was how package software started emerging little by little for various business applications but of course uh, when you think about the emergence of the personal computer this happened you would say in the early 80s when you started seeing personal computers the kind of computers that we are using today nowhere near as sophisticated as what we are using now but still they were personal computers then you started seeing software like spreadsheets and uh, word processing software and so on which were completely packaged you don't buy a word processing package and then customize it to your requirements word processing is word processing anybody in the world does it in the same way so you don't really need to customize it those are package software which is truly packaged you use it out of the box but for business applications you really could not use the software out of the box for most of the business applications but what was happening was that gradually little by little more and more package software started becoming available for business when we talk about enterprise systems we need to clearly understand what exactly we mean by enterprise systems by enterprise systems you're really talking about software support for business transactions what do we mean by business transactions well you're running an organization and a customer comes along and places a sales order okay so this transaction has to be recorded somewhere so that the sales order that the customer placed can then be fulfilled later on by fulfilled we mean the product that the customer ordered can be shipped to the customer okay that's a business transaction or your some department within your organization needs to buy a particular product they tell the purchasing department look we want you to buy you know xyz product for us and the purchasing department then goes ahead and buys the product on behalf of this user community now the purchasing department might accumulate all the orders from many different user departments and then combine them and uh, buy you know buy a bulk purchase or whatever to to save money and so on 
right? So you need a system to keep track of these kinds of things, right? Or a company has lots and lots of material inventory stored at different places and it needs to know at any point in time how much of each kind of product or item that it's keeping in store, how much do we have on store? How much do we need for next month's production? Do we have enough? Do we need to buy some more and so on? So all of these activities were in the past performed as manual activities, very tedious manual activities. Today, all of this information is kept track of by using computer-based information systems. So that's what we mean by software support for business transactions because all information is stored now, nowadays stored on computers and you need software to be able to manage that information, to be able to update that information as the business conducts transactions, the business ships out finished products, the business buys raw material, the business uses raw material for production, the business produces finished goods. So all of this is constantly changing the information available on the system and something has to keep all of this information up to date and ongoing. So that's really where software support for business transactions comes into play by virtue of computer-based systems. So as we saw earlier, initially software development began by custom developing the various applications that a business needed. So for example, you could say that a business comes along most often the first application that was computerized in most organizations was the payroll application and then came financial accounting and then slowly other applications started getting computerized like order processing, purchasing, inventory management, material planning, plant maintenance and so on, manufacturing execution, project management, etc. So all of these get computerized one by one in organizations as and when they find the need to do this. Now, remember, initially, either you built all these functionalities in-house, custom developed them, or it is possible that you might have been able to buy package software for each of these things separately. But no organization or no vendor came along and said, look, here is software, the whole deal, encompassing all of these and much more that you can use to run your organization. There was no custom built software that took care of all the functions of a business. Okay, so either you custom developed individual pieces or you purchased individual pieces from different vendors if available and then you tried to somehow run your organization with all of these. Now the problem with this is that you can understand that when you look at a business operation, business operations are not compartmentalized by you know payroll and financial accounting and order processing and purchasing and so on everything happens together, right? So when you ship a product to a customer as a result of a sales order that they placed, you still, you have accounting implications of that activity. You also have management accounting implications of that. When you purchase, obviously you also have accounting implications. Similarly, when you process an order, that has implications for materials management. Because after all, when you ship the product out to the customer, you're going to take it out of inventory and then send it to the customer. In the early days of computing, they had what are called as batch applications. Today we are used to what are called online applications where when a transaction occurs, we just enter the details on the system and everything gets updated immediately. For example, let's say you uh, go to amazon.com, you buy a book, and as soon as you place the order for the book, your file has been updated. In fact, you can immediately go and look at your order status and there will be your latest order that you created. This was not how it was with early information processing technologies. With early information processing technologies, what happened was that when you carried out a transaction, the details of the transaction would be entered on paper and then passed on to some people in the information systems department and they would then enter the details onto the computer system. Typically what they would actually do is to punch that information onto punch cards and then they would run these cards through a card reader machine which would then update it on the computer system. So that is what is called as batch systems. 
In, in batch applications, what happens is that there is a delay between the time an event occurs and when it is actually recorded in the system. So typically what would happen is all the activities for an entire day would be performed manually through paper and then at the end of the day in the evening all of this information would get updated on the computer so when you come back the next morning you will then see the information which is current as of that point but of course within five minutes that information becomes obsolete because what has happened just now will be entered in the system only at the end of the day. With improving technology online systems became possible and as and when transactions took place they could immediately be recorded the kind of systems that we are used to these days. So that was another development uh, but as we discussed earlier with custom development applications like we saw applications that are developed piecemeal uh, if you go back here to this slide we say, see that each of these applications was either purchased or developed in-house but they were all developed piecemeal independently. Now that's a big problem because as I've already discussed a lot of these processes are actually interrelated but when these applications are developed piecemeal those integrations are not very smooth. So uh, it becomes a problem that uh, applications like for example order processing and material management, inventory management they are not seamlessly integrated because they were developed at different points in time. Perhaps they were uh, developed by different vendors too. And trying to get the information to coordinate between these kinds of systems becomes difficult. That's a big problem with custom development. And people started feeling the need in the um, early 80s, I would say to mid 80s for integrated systems. Because after all, business is not, you know, uh, business is not fragmented as you know this is finance this is marketing this is production everything happens it is for our convenience that we chunk them up into these functional areas and when you develop software to handle only small pieces of the overall picture then integration becomes a problem and people don't make decisions with all the current information available so for example let us say your sales order processing system is not properly integrated with your inventory management system. Then what really happens is when somebody calls up to place a sales order, you don't know exactly how much of the material you have available with you. So you cannot promise a delivery date properly to the customer. Now that could mean that you lose the sale because the customer may find that some other company is able to meet the delivery date immediately and therefore they would not buy it from you. You could have also given it because you actually had stock. The problem is you didn't know about it. So that's a big problem with the lack of integration of various systems. Another example would be the integration between manufacturing and materials management and manufacturing and purchasing. So all of these things are integrated and custom development, piecemeal development of systems did not allow for this integration. So that is what led to the development of so-called enterprise systems, right? Side by side with the experience that was accumulating from the early 60s till the mid 80s companies uh, consulting companies which had done many projects for example companies like IBM right they would sell computer systems but they would also send their uh, software developers to go and consult for various organizations to develop their custom systems right so a company like IBM or a company like Oracle they went and developed hundreds and hundreds of each of these individual components for various clients. As a result, what happened was that they developed a good understanding of the overall business landscape and they started developing integrated products, which you now call enterprise systems. In fact, the first company that developed such systems was SAP out of Germany, which uh, happens to be the only uh, significant software company in the world which is outside of the US. All other big software companies are all American companies but SAP is an exception. It's a German company. It's a leader in enterprise systems and it was one of the first companies to say look I can give you the complete software packaged in a highly integrated way that you can use to run your entire organization. Okay, not just payroll, not just financial accounting, not just management accounting not just purchasing or production management or inventory management but the whole thing integrated so that when you uh, perform a transaction all other 
uh, integrations are in place right of course these kinds of systems uh, it's not like a word processing system that you just buy and use they would still need to be customized but most of your functionality would come out of the box and you would do a little bit of customization which would still cost you several million dollars still much better to develop uh, to buy a package software and customize it than to develop everything from scratch it would take you decades and yet you would not get the complete quality that you would get from a vendor who has built these systems over and over again right there's no point in reinventing the wheel you could buy this system and then focus on your core competence because after all your core competence might be banking your core competence might be uh, you know building missiles and so on and so forth you don't want to waste your organizational energy building information systems right so you would buy a system and customize it to your requirements so that is the genesis of enterprise systems which sometimes are called enterprise accounting systems because after all you're accounting for everything in the enterprise when you do these uh, when you run these systems and that is the subject matter of this course so what we want to understand is the structure of these systems how are these systems designed and built and those kinds of things.